Lakeside. And a PDC title holder, having won his maiden PDC title at the Players' Championship event. It was that weekend before the Grand Prix. Held in Dublin. City West Hotel. The very, yeah, the very same. And Alan Norris, big scorer, aggressive player. Get through first, came on! And Norris is quite capable of doing something here. Remember, in the last European Tour event, we saw Joe Cullen dump Gary One Anderson out 6-0. That yeah. doesn't happen very often. It certainly does not. You know, and prior to that, Anderson had looked the business. He beat Daryl Gurney 6-1, Willie O'Connor 6-2. It was fairly serene progress through the draw, but then he came up against Joe Cullen in the last eight in Munich, and that was the end of that. 83. Yeah, he does have off days occasionally, Gary, particularly around the doubles, and that's what ended up costing him against Cullen. But I didn't have to go that far back. I was having a look to see when wow. the last time he was whitewashed. And it was only in September last year. You will never guess who did it. 60. <laughs> As a joke, I was going to say Dylan Duo. Obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> no, it wasn't Dylan Duo. Uh, Gary Anderson whitewashed in September of last year. 100. What, in a Players' Championship event yeah. was that? You're not going to get it. Hang on, let me just pluck You're a name You're not going out. to get it. 26. 26? From the World and Premier League champion? What is happening here in Gibraltar? 50. Mm, that's more like it. That's much more like it. Oh, Gary, 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 Gary Anderson. First maximum of the match. That is some setup shot from Alan Norris. Oh. Terry Temple. <laughs> there will be no whitewash, so it becomes academic because malarkey. Terry Temple Tourette's kicking in there. No, Terry Temple was not the man who whitewashed Gary Anderson in September of last year. It was Andy 62. Bolton, X Factor. Wow. The Scotland based Stokey. Let's go back to 2013 for the last time and whitewashed Gary Anderson. That was Ian White, a man who whitewashed MVG just a few weeks ago. Yeah. So look. He's got previous. He has got previous. He's got four me and one smashing up the best players in the world. But there will be no whitewash here for Gary Anderson. In fact, the bookies will make him the favourite for this one. And he seems well, right to be finding that treble bed with a bit more regularity now. Back-to-back -back ton 40s as these two fight it out for a place in the last 16 to face the number four seed, well, James uh, Wade. But there's a maximum for Alan Norris. Right, yeah, Alan Norris. Well, right, Underlining his capabilities. Gary Anderson heads to Rotterdam on Thursday for the final round 54. of matches in the Premier League prior to Gary finals night. The reigning champion. Lost his first two matches in this 56. season's Premier League campaign, but he's bounced back very, very strongly indeed. Yeah, to say the least, now 85. Mm. 85. Gary, you require 40. Oh, he nearly took it out, but Gary Anderson, double ten. Game and he only Sagan needs there. a two darts to see Gary it off, and Anderson. it is two nil to the world Gary champion, the and it's a break of Came throw. On. Now, Alan Norris came through the opening round, knocking out one of the Gibraltar players, the host nation qualifier, George Federico. He won it 6-1, but was... Do not mention the one one nine checkout. You're not allowed to. No, again. We've, we've, like, it's being mentioned, it was... 59. One of the standout moments of this weekend, George Federico taking out 119 in the very first leg to take the lead. Didn't get much better for him than that. But 60. Perhaps even more shocking than that particular visit was when you look at the stats from that game. One right, Norris averaged 86. You know, he wasn't pushed. But the average, Anna Norris's average for the first three darts over the entire that game. First three darts every leg. Wow, right on, 67. That's shocking. That, I mean, that is, that's the only person who had a worse average than that, and I include players who have been beaten 6-0 yesterday. 45. Was George Federico, who had 65. Right. So look, and, and the weird thing is, 
of all the players in the world, you might think that Alan Norris is not one of them because he is a big, big scorer. It just it was just not working for him yesterday. Not really going that great for him today. Gary, you require 150. No, his average at the moment is uh, just uh, under 89. 100. Fires that third dart into the treble bed between the previous two. 66. Oh, Gary, you require 50. Well, there's an opportunity to apply some pressure there, but Gary Anderson doesn't miss Game many doubles nowadays. Bay. It always used Gary to be the Anderson, criticism of Gary Anderson, but it just doesn't happen game that on. often. He will have the off odd game where he's just off his finishing, but now Gary Anderson, when you've got three darts in his hand and looking at doubles, you just expect him to take them out, particularly double wow, top right and double 12. 40. Double 12, he's won the world title on twice now. Well, Anderson in that last leg, he had visits of 93, 60 and 58, and he still would have fairly handsomely anyway. Oh, the first course of stand-up if I you love the say, dog. That's the Gibraltar that's, this weekend. That's been missing. Well, I'm right on 40. And it spurred Alan Norris into life with a couple of 140s to start this fourth leg, a leg that you already feel that 99. he might need to get on the board to mount a serious challenge. This is what we're talking about, Gibraltar. I never doubted you. 100. 100. Alan, you require 121. Chance here for Norris to register the first leg of the match. 81. <laughs> Just toying with us there, Alan Norris. Yeah, Anderson on 2-2-1. Two, two, Right. The weird thing is, right, he's hit 60, 60 so he's got 61 left. You go 11 ball, fine. But if you're not going to go ball, why go 11? Why not go treble Game 7 to top? Full flag. Yeah. Unless you desperately play want to leave double 14 by hitting treble 11, but I wouldn't have thought he would. doesn't matter anyway, he's got the first leg on the board, and that's a way back into this 85. match for Alan Norris. It is. One hundred and thirty-four. Now he feels like he's got into a bit more of a rhythm now, Alan Norris. Maybe that's just settled him down. A good strong 60. leg on his throw to get the first one on the board. Well, at this stage of the Gibraltar Trophy last year, Anderson beat Devon Peterson, but he was beaten 40. in the last 16 by Terry Jenkins, 6-4. He missed the uh, remaining seven tournaments 83. of last year. He made a long overdue return to Europe in Venray in February. Lost his opening match there against Mervyn King. Oh, now then, now. Alan Norris with a maximum, leaves himself 47. Anderson's way, way back on his own throw as well. 96. 96 doesn't get him to a finish, so take your pick, Alan. What do you want to hit for your double? It'll be tops. And there it is, and it's 3-2 with a break of throw. And Norris right back in this one now. Game on. He is indeed. Effectively, still needs to find another break because Anderson threw first. But that's 96. a step in the right direction for Alan Norris, no doubt about it. Yeah, it certainly is. There we go, 13 darts and 11 darts. Decent from Chuck. Scotland-based Somerset man against the Somerset-based Scotsman. And the average... Now at 99 for Norris, compared to just 89 for Anderson. Yeah, and a 13 dart leg backed up by an 11 dart leg as well. All of a sudden, there's a very different emphasis on this match. 85. Now, though, here comes the world champion. Here comes the world champion with his second maximum. He's not down to a finish, though. 166, a bogey number. Couldn't get to a finish from where he was. So Norris, a 140. 85. Oh, wow. Doesn't stay straight. That means he's not on a finish. Had he just fired in a 20, he would have been. Yeah, it's cost him that, potentially. One on. see him. Not happy with that, but still, he's certainly looking at... Bit more fired up than he was earlier in the match, and that's a well, some set up shot that is. Now, Gary Anderson needs this. Only going to get one dart. Oh, wow. Well, it's like 30, double 16. Score. Double 16. It's not his favourite. He didn't want to leave 
Double 16. Straight there, I think. Game shot on the sixth leg. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Gary Anderson. Seventh leg, Gary well, the well, well. first. Game on. I think there was a pause there. What did I hit? There was another slight pause. What does that leave? And then, doesn't matter. Bang. Premier League champion, world 96. champion. 4 2 up. I think there was another pause just to see what Norris was on momentarily as well. But yeah, Anderson breaks back. 4 2. Good match this now. Did promise much. 85. But it's advantage, Anderson, once again. Well, well, Norris has it. recorded a victory over Gary Anderson. He did so on that that day in Dublin at the City West when he won his maiden title. He beat Anderson in the semi-finals. When it's 6-4, he averaged 108 then in the final against Hybrex to win it. But Anderson has beaten him twice. 100. Admittedly. Although one of those was three weeks after that defeat to gain some revenge. The other one was way back in the dim and distant past in 2008. They've probably both forgotten about that, the Welsh Open. So. <laughs> but they do have a couple of recent meetings. And it's one apiece from those two. As Norris now misses the bullseye. But he's probably, probably coming back. Or is he? Or is he? He's oh, not! 161 checkout and Norris Anderson. turns away in disgust. Gary first. Anderson may, may have just landed the killer blow in this one. Wow. Ruthless, brutal, devastating. Gary Anderson, world champion. That's exactly why. But look at Alan Norris here looking to respond wow. with a 180. Adam, 21. Just strays with that final darts. Oh, that was... Another 42. candidate for highlight of the weekend so far. Highlight of the day, definitely. Wow, that's Brilliant early. stuff from Gary Anderson. That treble 19, treble 18 ball for a 161 checkout. And after Norris had just missed 1 2 1 on the ball as well, it would have been. That's the difference between 5 2 and 4 3. Massive, massive difference. 95. Norris has now got to win four straight legs against the world and Premier League champion. He can do it. It's a heck of a lot harder than it might have been. Wow, I don't fancy. Yeah, he's not playing badly here by any stretch, Alan Norris. 91. Alan, you require 150. Now, a bit of a slow start from him, and then been undone by a moment of brilliance there, but ooh, very nearly a moment of brilliance of his own, although not under the same kind of pressure as Gary Anderson. And, you know, he will return to have a go at 19, 60. so I'd imagine it'll be 3 double eight. There's a 3. Double 4, then. 15. Well, again, he's going to come back. Ninety-nine. Alan, you require four. Yeah, double two for Alan Norris. Mm, that doesn't look good. He's that running out of lifelines here, isn't he? Again. Halfway up the rock, throwing that. Good oh, score. Can't sneak yeah. it past and Gary Anderson. It may be a rather ignominious end to the campaign for Alan Norris if Ando takes this out, and he might do. He might do. Topsy wants. Game Topsy shot. gets. And, and my word, Gary, Gary Anderson. Anderson, one stunning moment of quality. The 161 check out on the bullseye just swung this match in his favour massively when he was coming under some serious pressure from the former Lakeside finalist. Norris didn't disgrace himself by any means. He put up a fight, but it paid the price for a slow start. The world champion is through to the last 16. That's the stage of the tournament he reached last year. He was knocked out by Terry Jenkins. He's not made it past the quarterfinals of this event in the three previous years that it's been held. But Anderson is still in there and is a very real danger to the dominance of Michael Van Gerwen this weekend. Speaking of which, he's on the way. The world number one on stage in just a few moments to take on Nick Fortwell, the hero from Starbridge. And what a hero he would be if he can upset the odds. But I think, I think there may be something to do with an eight-foot stick of meat going on stage in just a few moments' time over the advantage of the Dots trophy.